and gentlemen. This is Masa of SoftBank from Japan, and he's just agreed to invest $50 billion in the United States and 50,000 jobs. And he's one of the great men of industry. So I just want You may have seen this video of SoftBank's founder and CEO, Masayoshi Son, meeting with President-elect Donald Trump in December 2016, where he said he would invest $50 billion in the United States. Or you may have read about what appears to be SoftBank's failed $15 billion investment in WeWork, the office sharing company. What is confusing is why does this Japanese company seem to have more money than God? And more recently, why has its founder become the butt of many jokes? However, being called crazy is actually nothing new for SoftBank's founder and visionary, masayoshi san This video will go through the story of SoftBank and explain what it is. Before we start, welcome to our channel, The Market is Open. Please hit the like button at any time during the video if you're enjoying our content. Also, check out our second channel, TMIO Tesla, which discusses Elon Musk's biggest company. To understand SoftBank, we need to understand masayoshi san who was determined from a young age to be a business success. Without being invited, in 1973, he took a plane to Tokyo and knocked on the door of his business idol to ask for advice. Actually, he spent 15 minutes with me, talking face to face. And he gave you some advice, which was to learn... Yeah, I asked him, what business should I do? Hmm, computer. With technology in mind, Sun then left his family at age 16 to move to the United States because he liked the American entrepreneurial spirit. In university, he had a plan to make money by focusing five minutes a day on what he felt would be the most lucrative use of his time. Five minutes, if I focus, I can come some idea. I can make some idea. So I set alarm clock five o'clock, five minutes. And tick, tick, tick. Uh, in five minutes, I said, come, invention, come. <laughs> Sun used his business savvy to recruit two researchers to build his idea, an electronic language translator. He then sold the patent to Sharp, a Japanese corporation, for over a million dollars. With this success and a university education, he returned to Japan in 1981 to start SoftBank. Why the name SoftBank? So I aggregate all kinds of software from the small software houses. And I, I, I wholesale to the you know, PC stores. So it's like a bank, you know, the software's bank. It's... In case his explanation wasn't clear, SoftBank was designed to be a wholesaler of software, meaning it would buy software from smaller companies, then resell it to larger companies at a higher price. He hired two part-time employees and told them on their first day, you guys have to listen to me because I am president of this company. In five years, I'm going to have 75 million in sales and in 10 years, we will be the number one PC software distribution company. Given that the company had zero sales at the time, the employees thought he was crazy and they quit. His next biggest business expansion idea was to buy the biggest booth at a 1981 Japanese trade show and pretend that SoftBank was indeed a large company. He recruited smaller software companies to be at his booth, but these smaller companies ended up making sales through their own companies and not through SoftBank. And once again, Masa was seemingly being laughed at. However, a few weeks later, one high-profile client did sign up with SoftBank, and Sun used this client to advertise the company's success and size. This helped it grow sales to $150,000 within a month and to $15 million by 1982. By 1993, SoftBank had $465 million in sales. In addition, Sun also expanded his company in the 1980s into computer magazines. In 1994, it went public in Japan, selling 3.7 million shares, valuing the firm at 600 million. Masa used the excitement for tech in the mid-1990s to expand his empire, and the American media soon began calling him the Bill Gates of Japan. And SoftBank began to make many large investments. And in early 1995, it borrowed 500 million to buy Comdex, which was the largest computer entertainment show at the time. Later that year, he bought Ziff Davis for $1.8 billion, who was a publisher of the most popular computer magazines. While these investments ended up being unsuccessful, with SoftBank losing approximately $1 billion, they were indicative of future deals for SoftBank, and SoftBank would issue around $4 billion of debt to make these deals. This debt provided him the capital to hit his first jackpot in 1995, when SoftBank invested $100 million in Yahoo. Sun actually had to convince Yahoo's founder, Jerry Yang, to take his money. And I convinced Jerry Yang to take $100 million of our investment. 
His final investment in Yahoo ended up being closer to $500 million, and he sold out most of this investment in the early 2000s for approximately $3 billion. However, what most people in the West may not realize, SoftBank's bigger gain would be on Yahoo Japan, which is still today one of Japan's most powerful technology companies. He did this by convincing Yahoo in 1996 to start a joint venture with SoftBank, but Sun demanded majority ownership. SoftBank ended up investing $1.2 million for 60% of the company. Today, Yahoo Japan is worth over $20 billion, and SoftBank still owns more than 40% of it. Yahoo Japan's future will be discussed later in the video. By 1998, SoftBank held stakes in 60 internet-related firms, and it claimed to have 7-8% to of the market value of all internet-listed companies. In addition, it started a venture capital arm. Investors were excited with SoftBank's prospects, and the company's market value reached a peak of about $184 billion in 2000. Masayoshi likes to point out that three days richer than Bill Gates. Is that right? Yeah. For three days. <laughs> for three days. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. Uh, and, and Larry Ellison was actually for a couple of days richer than Bill Gates. Oh, could be. Yeah. 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 Right. But you were there for three days. Yeah, yeah. I, our company. Did you tell everybody when you were the richest man in the world? I didn't. Did you? You know, <laughs> Did it was too short. <laughs> However, SoftBank's legacy distribution business was no longer worth much, as software wholesaling had gotten competitive and was no longer very profitable. Therefore, its value was based on the belief that it would continue to get favorable deals like Yahoo Japan. But this narrative would soon erode as American companies stopped using SoftBank for deals. An example is Jeff Bezos, Amazon's founder, declining a partnership with SoftBank. Though SoftBank was still investing, in January 2000, right before the tech crash, it invested $20 million in Alibaba, which has become one of the firm's most famous investments. In 2020, Alibaba is the largest e-commerce company in the world and has a market value of nearly $600 billion. Sun explains his rationale for this investment. Well, he had no business plan <laughs> and uh, zero revenue. Uh, employees, maybe 35, 40 employees, but his eyes was very strong, strong eyes, strong, shining eyes. Um, I could tell. This investment will be further discussed later in the video because in 2000, Alibaba was an infant and SoftBank had to be more concerned with the impending tech market crash. By December 2000, its stock was down about 90% to 18 billion in market value. And many media outlets were very satisfied with SoftBank's apparent demise. One academic said, what happened with SoftBank is just a manifestation of the overall trend in the industry because it threw money into money losing startups. However, despite rumors of its demise, SoftBank still had a war chest. While its investment portfolio was down from its peak of $48 billion, it was still worth about $10 billion, and most of that was profit. However, SoftBank's next investment would be on finding its own new business. Many doubted the company's strategy of making its third transformation. SoftBank had already been a software distribution company, then an investment company, and now it wanted to be a telecommunications company. Wired Magazine in a 2003 article called this a fat pipe dream. This was because in 2001, the Japanese telecom industry was dominated by Nippon Telegraph and Telephone, or NTT, which was part owned by the Japanese government. SoftBank described NTT as expensive and slow, and Sun said he was prepared for battle. But NTT restricted SoftBank's access to its network, so in 2001, a frustrated Sun traveled to a Japanese politician's office and made a weird threat. He said, if you don't help me, I'm going to pour gasoline all over myself and light myself on fire with this $1 lighter. The government, for whatever reason, decided to help out SoftBank. In order to realize its goal, SoftBank also sold over $6 billion in investments from 2000 to 2004, and it poured billions into networking equipment. In addition, it lost over $200 million in 2002 and $800 million in 2003. Sun's strategy was to lose money on initial customers in order to grow the business rapidly. He priced SoftBank's broadband at a price far below its competitors, and Wired Magazine said the company seems like one of the most foolish dot-com plays selling a dollar for 80 cents and trying to make it up in volume. But by late 2003, SoftBank's broadband losses were slowing, and it now had 60% of the Japanese high-speed market. This rapid revenue growth helped SoftBank to expand, and in 2004, it bought Japan Telecom for approximately $3 billion. It did this to gain efficiencies and gain more business clients, and it funded the acquisition 
position with about 1.5 billion in debt and SoftBank's total debt reached close to 8 billion. But SoftBank's transformation was not yet complete. In 2005, it wanted to bet on the rapid growth of the mobile phone market. Even though the iPhone had not yet been invented, Sun guessed that Apple's Steve Jobs was working on a phone. And who can create the best weapon in the world? I said, it's only one guy, Steve Jobs. So did you call him up or did you go yeah. see him? I, I called him up and went to see him. And I, I brought my little drawing of iPod with uh, <laughs> uh, you know, mobile uh, capability. Yes. And I gave him my drawing and, and Steve says, Masa, you don't Masa. give me, Masa, you don't give me your drawing. <laughs> But the problem for his company was it did not yet have a mobile network, but Jobs agreed with Sun that if he got one, he would give SoftBank exclusive access to his phone. SoftBank fulfilled this promise by buying Vodafone's struggling Japanese cell phone unit for $15.4 billion in March 2006. This instantly made it Japan's third largest mobile carrier with 15 million subscribers. The purchase was massive related to SoftBank's size, and its debt went from $8 billion to $25 billion. In order to get this much debt to fund the deal, Masayoshi had to use his persuasive powers. Uh, then the Vodafone Japan became available. $20 billion, I had $2 billion, so $18 billion short. So where did you get the money? So I convinced the bank. Sun convinced the bank that he could turn around Vodafone's struggling unit, and he was right. By 2009, SoftBank showed it was the third most profitable company in Japan in terms of operating income. More importantly, SoftBank's telecom business continued to succeed, and it gained market share from 2007 to 2011. SoftBank's mobile business was becoming extremely profitable, and the company averaged over $5 billion in operating income from 2007 to 2013. So with all this success, how come SoftBank is not viewed as a telecommunications company today? In 2016, Sun wanted to turn SoftBank back into more of an investment-focused company, which was a strategy that he had pursued in the late 1990s, and many outsiders were noticing this transformation. Well, what you're going to see is SoftBank, as in SoftBank Group, the parent, rather than the Japanese phone business, it's going to become very much an investment company. Since SoftBank now is more of an investment vehicle, it has a series of pieces that make up the company. Let's go through the seven most valuable pieces of SoftBank. SoftBank has sold over $19 billion of stock in Alibaba since 2016, and its latest deal was $11 billion of stock in 2019. Despite these sales, SoftBank still owns over 630 million shares, worth over $130 billion in the company. In 2018, SoftBank started to reduce some of its interest in its telecommunication business. It sold about 33% of the business in late 2018 for $24 billion, and in late May 2020, it sold a further $3 billion. Despite these sales, it still owns about 62% of the telco business. And its stake, including the cash from the most recent sale, is worth about $39 billion. One final note is Yahoo Japan is now 50% owned by the telecommunications unit, so the value of this business is now reflected inside this company. As mentioned earlier, Yahoo Japan continues to be a large player in the Japanese market and has continued to grow. One of SoftBank's first big bets as an investment company was to buy the English semiconductor company Arm Holdings in 2016. SoftBank owns close to 100% of the company, but 25% of this investment is inside its vision fund, which will soon be discussed. SoftBank paid about $31 billion for the acquisition. It has also shown its usual willingness to forego profits in order to invest in growth. Arm's adjusted EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, has actually declined since SoftBank has bought it. But SoftBank says this is because it has made large investments. On the other hand, ARM-based chips that have been shipped have increased rapidly since SoftBank bought the company. And major companies have recently increased the use of ARM-based chips. Sun's bet on ARM is a bet on an explosion of chips on smaller devices that in the future will be connected to the internet, which is often referred to as the Internet of Things. SoftBank bought 80% of Sprint in 2013. In early 2020, T-Mobile and Sprint completed a merger, making it a formidable competitor to AT&T and Verizon. Because of this merger, SoftBank now only owns about 25% of the new T-Mobile company, and it has plans to sell off most of this stake, which is now worth about $29 billion. SoftBank also has special warrants in the investment that will be explained in a caption below. SoftBank's other investments are worth about $8 billion, according to Sun. This includes investments in other public companies or private companies controlled by SoftBank. 
Finally, let's talk about the controversial Vision Fund, which is the largest venture capital fund in the world. The Vision Fund is basically a hedge fund where Sun is investing on behalf of his company and some other notable investors, including Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi. The structure also uses leverage, which means SoftBank has some upside, but it also has more downside if prices drop. The Vision Fund gets a lot of media attention and is frequently criticized, but it is not such a large piece of the company yet. Here are some of the companies that SoftBank currently owns in its Vision Fund. We have a future video plan called How Much Has SoftBank Lost This Year, where we plan to go through the most important Vision Fund holdings, including WeWork. Let us know in the comments or leave a like if you would like to see this type of video. As of May 2020, SoftBank values its Vision Fund holdings at about $24 billion, and from inception, it shows the fund is down about $0.8 billion. But given that many of these holdings are in private companies, the fund may actually be down more or less since there is a lot of subjectivity in valuing private companies. What can be said is SoftBank heavily marked down the Vision Fund in 2020, so this estimate may be conservative. The final thing is SoftBank has about $31 billion in cash on its balance sheet. So that sums up what SoftBank has, but what does it owe? We also want to show SoftBank's liabilities since SoftBank has frequently been criticized for its debt. SoftBank, it seems, and say Masa is the biggest risk taker. He always has been. He almost went belly up in 2000 when the yes. dot com exploded. Yes. Uh, and it could happen again because of how much debt you have on your balance sheet. What do you say when you hear that? Well, I say thank you for worrying about me, uh, worrying about our company. SoftBank has about $122 billion of debt, but we need to minus out the telecom company's debt and cash because the two companies separated in late 2018. I have also deducted estimated taxes that will need to be paid when SoftBank sells these holdings, which is estimated to be $58 billion. This leaves SoftBank's pieces with a total value of about $158 billion, which is far above its market price of about $90 billion in May 2020. The stock can be purchased on the Japanese exchange and the over-the-counter market in the United States. We have attached a free sheet on our Patreon page showing SoftBank's value calculation. In addition, this page has historical earnings results and an explanation of SoftBank's ticker symbols in the United States. This is obviously not a recommendation to buy or sell SoftBank stock. However, it does show how SoftBank may be undervalued. And Masayoshi has discussed the company's undervaluation because many people do not understand what SoftBank is. We hope this video helps to explain Masayoshi's canvas. Not investing into the distressed asset. I am investing at the beginning of paradigm shift. When people still wonder, when people still debate whether that new paradigm is coming or not. Sometimes people think it's too risky, uh, too fragile, but I see the future paradigm shift is coming so that at the right at the beginning of the major paradigm shift, uh, we decide uh, aggressively to make investment.